guys. I am ready to do the first tutorial, full tutorial. So I'm going to show you guys what we're going to make. So basically, it's, I call it a rice bag. It's a bag made of fabric, full of rice. And basically what I use it for is there's two different ways. You can use it for a heat pad or you can use it for a cold pack. Uh, what's really cool about it is that you can use it for a cold pack. You just put it in the freezer and let it sit until it's cold. And you can put it on stuff that hurts, like if you have a, like a sore knee or if you get your wisdom teeth out. I don't know. I, this would have been really awesome when I got my wisdom teeth out. Or you can use it for a heat pack, like when you have achy muscles or like your neck hurts or your back hurts all day from sitting in a desk, like I know mine does. And you can just put it in the microwave for a minute and a half with a cup of water, like you can just use like a coffee mug or something. And then you turn it over and you put it in for another cup of water. Basically what I do is I'll like, I'll like fold it like this in the microwave and then I'll just like splash it around and then I'll put it back in the microwave for about another minute and a half. So it's like three minutes, but it'll be really hot, so just be careful taking it out. So I'm going to show you guys how to make it. It's pretty easy, and if you have problems with the hand sewing or anything like detail, I'm going to go into more detail in other videos. So go ahead and check those out. All right, thanks. Okay, so we're going to first start out with these. They're fabric quarters. You can buy them at Hobby Lobby. And then we need a bag of rice. Oh, upside down. Um, back of face. Just get that like the store or something. Then you need some scissors, any kind of work. Uh, I use fabric scissors. And then you need a needle, a sewing needle, and some thread, whatever color that you are doing. And then you need something to measure with. I have like several rulers, and this one's clear. This one, and then I, I'm just gonna use my measuring tape for this one. And then you need a sewing machine and some tunes. So we're going to start out, we're going to unfold this nonsense, folding it out, flattening it, we're going to iron it really fast, make sure it's just, you get all the wrinkles out, and then we're going to kind of line it up and cut off any edges, flatten it out, my air conditioner was being a jerk, and just make sure it's all smooth, lined up, I'm doing two pieces, but you're going to have an easier time because you're only doing one, um, something to mark with, and then just measure. So, I'm using chalk, you could use pencil, you could use a regular number two pencil, you can use all kinds of stuff to mark with it. Um, just don't use something that will stain the fabric or that will show up, you want it to be barely visible. And just flatten this all out, make it nice and smooth, and then just and use the pins and pin it down before you cut out the square, the rectangle, I guess. Um, I'm just using my pin magnet. If you don't have one of those and you really want to sew, I would suggest getting something like that. It's really cool. And just pin all the edges where you're going to like cut on the inside. And just pin it down. I'm pinning two pieces of fabric. You won't have to do this if you're only using one. So I'm pinning my fabric together. And then just cut it out. And then you'll end up with these, this square. It's about this size. And you want to make sure that the difference between the right side and the wrong side. So you notice like the right side is darker and the wrong side is lighter. That's usually how you can tell it's it's like faded. So you want to put right sides together and fold it in half. It's a long ways like a hot dog. And then you want to go ahead and smooth it down and make sure the edges meet. And just meet up all your edges and corners and everything and then just start pinning down every all the edges and all the corners. So pinning down all the edges and just making sure everything's nice and flat and it's going to stay still. So it's going to look like this when you're done with it. It'll just have all the pins in it. and You want to leave a little space. I use, always use it on the short end. And that's where you're going to leave a hole. So now we can start sewing. Alright, so just sew all this up. And just sew on the edges. I sewed it at a 3 8 of an inch. Uh, you could sew it at a half. Just um, I think the best I think the best would be three between one fourth and one half of an inch. This is where you want to leave a hole. Just make sure you leave a little like probably about a two inch to three inch hole so that you can turn it inside out. And uh, remember to backstitch every time you start a new line. Now I'm going to tell you how to do the corner. 
So basically you're going to stitch all the way until you get to like right about where you think like 3 eighths of an inch or 5 eighths, whatever your seam allowance is. And then you're going to put your needle down and you're going to lift up your presser foot and then pivot it and then flatten that all out. And then you're going to put down your presser foot. Don't forget to do that. I've done that before. And then you're going to go ahead and just keep sewing straight. So like put down the presser foot, make sure everything's all even, and it should be right on your seam allowance. It should be just head pivoted right on it. It takes practice to kind of figure out what seam allowance is, but uh, just don't worry too much about it. Um, just remember to pick up your fabric and pivot. Now you have everything all sewn up and everything. It should look like this. So like I had a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, everything's all sewn together, and I did leave a hole on my short side. So you see that, there's a hole right there. So you just want to be able to get the fabric through. If you feel like you need a bigger hole, go ahead and do that, but just make sure that it's at least 2 inches I think is a good size for this one. So next what I'm going to do is we're going to clip the corners. So this is really important to make sure that you can get nice crisp corners. It's not too big of a deal with this, but just go ahead and clip off the corner. It should look just like that. You're basically cutting off triangles. And you want to cut, don't, just make sure not to cut the thread. That's the biggest part. So do that to everywhere. And we'll go ahead and trim off any excess all around the edges. And then this is what the other corner should look like. It's the same thing except you're not doing it on both sides because this is on the fold. So you're going to trim down your edges like this. It just it just reduces bulk and that way you don't have those big edges. So that's why it doesn't really matter what your seam allowance is because it's not going to end up mattering. It's just kind of stick with what you feel comfortable with. Just make sure it's even all along it so it's, you don't do 3 eighths of an inch or a half an inch. So now we're going to go ahead and turn it inside out. So just take that little hole and just gently push it through. Just try not to get it all bundled up. It'll be really pain to try to get all of that uh, fabric out once you get it all tangled up. And just it should look like this. It's just make sure all your corners out. Now we're going to go ahead and take scissors. And we're going to take the points of scissors. Mine aren't really that pointed. Just make sure you don't press all the way through. And we're going to point out the corners so that they're nice and crisp. So you're just going to take the points of scissors and push out the corners. You don't have to worry too much about this because it's not you. It's just a bag of rice. You're not really going to be worried too much about the corners. But it's still something nice to do. And so now it should look like this. It's all flat and nice. And what I kind of do is to when I iron it right before, I just roll the edges with my fingers. So roll the edges just a little bit with your fingers, and you can do this while you're ironing too and that will make the seams come out a little better. But like I said, don't worry too much about this. You're putting rice in this. It's going to go in the freezer and you know on people's like injured parts. So it doesn't really have to look too nice. But this gives you some good basic skills if you want to sew in the future. Let's go ahead and iron all of, and you know roll, roll in between your fingers. Roll the seam. And so you'll feel it coming towards the, the front. And that's kind of why, part of the reason why we get rid of bolt. So then you have this nice flat area. And now you're going to go ahead and take your sewing needle and you're going to close up that hole. So get your sewing needle ready. I double up on my thread, so you just thread it through and then you double it. So see, it's double right there. If you need to lick your thread to put, put it through the needle eye, then go ahead and do that. So I'm going to teach you how I do a knot at the end of my hand sewing thread. So you take it like this and then you want to wrap it around your index finger between your thumb and your index finger about like once you just want like a loop and then you roll it off of your finger and then you just pull on that knot and it should get a nice tight knot if it breaks don't worry about it too much just uh, do it again until you get a nice knot now if this happens to you where you accidentally made a hole in one of your corners with your scissors or a pencil or something then don't worry about it just take your hand sewing needle and go ahead and repair that hole and it should look like this not too attractive, that's why you don't really want to do it, but don't stress out too much about it. And now I'm going to show you how I do a knot. So I just take a little piece of fabric, like a couple threads, make a loop, 
and then go up through that loop with my sewing needle and then just pull tight and you could do that once or twice or a couple times it really just depends how however many you feel like is necessary I wouldn't go more than like four so don't overdo it but have fun with that and then just cut off your thread so if you're making your knot at the end of your sewing needle and you, this happens to you where you have that extra at the end of your knot just snip it off it's fine and then you'll have this nice little knot and it won't, won't have to worry about hiding it too much because it, it shouldn't show up too much. So you just make sure you have that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with rice. Yay, rice! So go ahead and get your rice and you want to get scissors. I actually use separate scissors. I'll explain that in a different video why I have two different pairs of scissors for different things. But I got a pair of scissors and you go ahead and just cut the very tip of the rice bag off. You just don't want it to be like the whole top because you, you want to have like a nice funnel going. And you just go ahead and take a funnel. Um, bigger, smaller, I mean the bigger it is the easier it is to pour in more rice and it doesn't take as long. So just stick the funnel inside the, inside the hole you made in your rice bag and then just pour the rice in. I have to do it little by little because I have such a little funnel. So just keep pouring rice and we're pouring rice and jiggle and get the rice all down in there and we're pouring and we're pouring this took me a very long time to do because it took just the bigger the funnel people the bigger the funnel it's so much easier and once you have all your rice in it should be about that much I used half of that bag for each of them so like so for one bag I used half a bag of a pound of rice so that's that's how much it, it sh that's what it should look like when you have it all filled up. Now we're cleaning up the rice and cleaning up the rice. It it will get messy. I suggest doing it over a table. Uh, hopefully you don't get stuff on the some on the floor like I did. So now we're going to take our sewing needle and we're going to close up that hole. What I did is I did two different kinds. I actually a whip stitch and I also did a a tunnel stitch. So I can show that to you guys if you just click description below. I'll have a link to another hand sewing video if you guys don't know how to hand sew. So this is what it should look like at the end. It'll just, you kind of just slosh it around. It should have enough rice to kind of fill a little layer in the bag. And it'll be awesome.